welcome back to another Mozzie Sales and Friends um, foil special. If you haven't watched it, put out a video last week delving into the background of the foil kind of design rule. And that's a really good starting point if you want to know what we're talking about in the rest of this video. But today we're going to go through some of the kind of like the key questions that you see about the foil design, starting off with some of the more visually obvious aspects and then as we get into the detail looking at some of the stuff that's quite hard to pick up with the eyes just as a bit of a background i think it's worth pointing out that all the boats have been on quite a design journey with foils and all the three challengers had a test boat that they used so those are some of the first um kind of america's cup focus foils we saw and then rolling into the actual cut boats. You've had two cut boats, but they're allowed six foils. We kind of covered this in the previous video, but it's worth reiterating. Definitely, for instance, Luna Rossa, American Magic, definitely had T foils on their test boats before they even made an AC-75. Uh, Luna Rossa also had a W-shaped foil. Generally, we can characterize the three frontal shapes as a T-shape where the arm goes right down to the bottom of the rule box and then you've got two foils coming out either side two foil arms coming out either side which um, kind of form one long foil then got the y which is the uh, anhedral foils which we're seeing with all the challenges at the moment quite a familiar shape and we also saw um, on Ineos's kind of previous set of foils there third and uh, third and fourth foil a w shape where it kind of comes out in a y from the stem and then there's another kink and it goes out flat to the edge of the box so a bit of a kind of a you know middle line so that's a bit of a bit of a general what we're seeing with these shapes but i've got tom partington and rob gunnan with me on the screen to my right and we're just gonna have a chat through about you know what do these shapes mean what's the purpose of them so you've you've already covered it the the t foil in its simplest form is it has the, the lifting surface at at the bottom of the rule box it's basically a 90 degree intersect between the two the two surfaces team new zealand are using a t foil shape for their main lifting arm or it it's pretty much a T, it's got very little anhedral angle. Um, so one of the key benefits of going down a T foil route rather than a, a Y or a W is that actually you, you're running your lifting surface much deeper. This actually allows you to, this actually gives you a better lift and drag coefficients, making your foil more efficient and it also it allows for reduced foil area whilst keeping an acceptable takeoff speed. So when I say this is that if you've watched the, the videos, you'll quite often see um, Team New Zealand sailing upwind with some of their foil coming out of the surface. Uh, and none of the other teams are, are doing this or doing it deliberately. Um, and there's a key reason for this. The Basically, ventilation is a, the biggest challenge of when a foil pierces the water surface. Um, and it is the, the chance of this happening is a function of the foil angle at where it intersects the uh, water surface. And a Y foil, where the, the foils are pointing downwards from, from the root section, uh, you have an exit angle of about eight degrees. Um, whereas on a T-foil lifting surface, you have an angle where it intersects the water about 24 degrees. Uh, this significantly reduces the chance of ventilation, so air being sucked down onto the lifting surface. Um, and so basically they can sail up wind with less foil area in the water, which at higher speed results in a, in a nice little drag gain. So they're basically the foil is deeper, you know, with this configuration, isn't it? More pressure on the water surrounding the foil and there where it's 
tipping out through the surface it does so at a more gradual rate with ride height as well which is another key thing so if you are pitching up and down it comes out at a slower rate doesn't it slower rate yeah if you if you imagine your foil being uh, horizontal to the water surface so it's either in or it's out whereas the yeah but the angle that it comes out at the actual the slower uh, the rate in the loss of area so it sounds like there's a lot of good stuff going for a t-foil but obviously Luna Rossa and American Magic have tested T-Falls and not used them. And you know, I've heard Terry Hutchinson speak about it, but I'd like to know kind of your guys thought on, you know, what, what's bad about a T-Fall? Because if it's this obvious, all the boats would be using them. So what's, what's the downside to a, to a T-Foil? Well, so, so on this point, I, I don't think when you're first designing your AC75 foils that it is obvious that you can fly with the tips really clear of the water. So Team New Zealand on their first 75 launched with one anhedral and one T. And I wonder if that's something they figured out through experimentation. So, so the first thing you have to do is actually ask the question, like, is this feasible to fly with the tip clear of the water? And if you, if you don't ask that question, then it's a, almost a more logical route to go down to say that for a given tip clearance to the surface, by going anhedral, you'll end up with less of the vertical foil, so that the main foil arm in the water, and you'll make a drag saving by having less vertical foil arm in the water. So it's a bit of a case of asking the right question initially. Yeah. Um, could, could be one of the reasons that we're seeing the difference. And then I think the other thing that is quite a good benefit of the anhedral shape, and potentially even more so the W shape, is that because the rule is so restrictive in the span of the foil, by putting kinks in it, you're effectively increasing the effective span. Th that gives you a little bit of a, an induced drag benefit all of these things are a trade-off. If you, if you gain in one area, you're going to lose in another. There's, there's no way about that, and it's not going to be very clear-cut. So the, deci the decisions are going to come down largely to what kind of conditions they're moding their boats for. Are they moding them for upwind, downwind? What kind of expected cant angles they're running? There'll be a... And what about the intercept? So, and the T, obviously, you know, just visually, has tighter angles there is that affecting is that affecting the drag as well that whole bulb and interface between the vertical and the horizontal you effectively have two airfoil profiles that if you just match them up to each other would be getting much thicker all at the same place the, the flow accelerates around the, the low pressure face of the foil and if you have too much flow acceleration with the speeds these boats are going, you get into the realms of cavitation. If you go down the W route, you open that angle up to the most e extreme of the options. So for the T, it would be approximately 90, whereas for the W, you really open it up. And th that effectively is butting up the fat parts of each surface in a less aggressive way and creates less extreme accelerations around the intersection. So that's, that's another positive, really, for the for the anhedral foils, isn't it? The, yeah, and, and, it is. And the W foil even more so, perhaps. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly um, what their cavitation risk is, but I I think it is a risk, um, particularly when they're going downwind <laughs> and particularly if they fly close to the surface. Yeah. It's a bit hard to know what the kind of coefficient of depressure is, but they're they're close, I would say. It's, it's, quite, it's quite a complicated... <laughs> to work out without exact geometries and and yeah. what sections yeah. they're doing how how they've tried to offset those sections to reduce that uh increase in pressure at that point but yeah. conven conventionally it's viewed that as you get to the 50 knot mark you're getting to the point where conventional um like NACA type section aerofoils will cavitate almost whatever you do uh, so the boats aren't, they're not at the point where they need to, I mean, when, when you look at things like sail rocket that have set world speed records, it's not possible to do that with conventional foils. You have to go down the cavitating foil route. Okay. And let's just go back to the, the W foil as well, because it, 
in my mind, we've talked about the, the pros and cons of each, but the W seems to be the best of everything in that the, the foil arm angle at towards the tip for the last section is very similar to the t force a lot going for that plus you can articulate the flaps different on each section potentially we're going to talk about that separately because there's some really interesting stuff there but why not use the w foil what's what are the issues there i think you, you're you're wrong in saying that that it is you, you can you can dictate your geometry better to to choose the best bits of both in a way uh by going down the w route it's the you you get it becomes a much more complicated mechanical engineering solution uh to operate a w foil uh in the same way with the same efficiency as you could uh, an anhedral or t foil they actually spent a bit of time after the after christmas before the product cup with odd foils on the w foil and the anhedral sailing with both and they looked pretty good on both so that w foil isn't a dead duck you know it's it's certainly viable and if you've managed to get the anhedral foil to the point where they have there's no ruling out the fact that that w foil could uh, could be resurrected as well uh, i'm just saying that while I'll induced there's no while induced drag is your kind of overriding factor at takeoff if it is actually fairly similar between all the foil options so yeah so th there is an induced difference between t or w or y but if if the difference is not that significant then by having your longer span you're actually getting just more profile drag i think it just goes to show that how difficult they're finding it to decide on what the optimum solution is there's so many factors in there that that they've tried different things they've obviously thought theoretically a w might be better otherwise they wouldn't have tried it and then they've gone down a different route so it'd be fascinating to know the the how their design spiral has gone internally yeah. i mean i i think the team new zealand approach to this is very interesting and i think what they've done is at, at a high level at the beginning they've said what's important to performance of an ac72 ac75 sorry what are these 75s <laughs> yeah 75s <laughs> so, so they've sat down they said what's important to the performance of an ac75 and i think they've identified writing moment as being really critical to the performance so best way to get writing moment is make your platform as wide as possible well a t allows you to make your platform as wide as possible the first issue you then run into is well if we will want to run the same cant angles as everyone else that means the tips are going to come clear of the water so can we deal with that and then they've kind of gone from there but the fact they now have a platform that is wider than everyone else's and i think I think the difference between the T and the anhedral when you're at your cant angle gives you something like 250 mil more foil to leeward. So that's yeah. like the, the, hull, the hull is effectively trapezing out an extra 250 mil versus the center of pressure. You've then got the foil on the windward side. Well, that's sticking out 700 mil further than the anhedrals. So the potential writing moment gain is not insignificant yeah that means you can then pull your sails in a bit harder so maybe you chuck more power into the mix so, so that's the team new zealand philosophy and it, it feels like they've gone down that route and like you say to divert from that now would be an almost impossible task so they've they've kind of put their cards on the table and e yeah. the other teams have equally done the same as well and that challenge of only having six foils like you get one wrong or drastically wrong and you lose a whole load of development when you've only got a limited amount of things to work on yeah that, that's another really interesting point isn't it when you look at the first sets of foils that, that a boats had and you look where they've got to now you do feel that some teams had substantially better first attempts at this than others and it's been a bigger catch-up process for for certain teams to get to where they are yeah. now 
I think that first getting your first attempt right or having something where you can get useful data from is would be so critical in the in the whole process. Okay, so that pretty much covers off one of the most obvious features of the foils we're seeing, and that is the frontal shapes. I think the conclusions for me were that the T4 very much gets the lifting surface deeper, so less chance of ventilation, and as it breaks through the surface, it does so in a more gradual manner. However, it's not quite that obvious, and a lot of the benefits of the T4 revolve around having a shape that won't ventilate and will tolerate the tip being flown out of the water for large portions of the time. Next time, we're gonna move on to talk about the presence of a central bulb or not, the pros and cons with this, before looking at the platform areas, leading edges, kind of total area, um, aspect ratios, and then finally we're going to move on to some of the more intricate details like the flap design and articulation where there's some kind of fascinating differences between the teams. So I'm going to try and cut these videos up into segments, keep this kind of question and answer format. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you found it informative. Fingers crossed we've spotted some things that you've not and it's uh, adding to the discussion online because these boats are fascinating and the design side certainly got my interest and um, I hope it's providing some entertainment for you as well.